A quick update on the homemade tools and getting ready for the plane build. Well, I've been a bit quiet of late, uh, and that's because I've had some hellish jobs on. I've had a few real big benches on, quite complex ones, so I've needed 100% of my head on them. But I'm nearing the end of them now, so we can start to think about these planes at last. We've been absolutely staggered by the response that that little plane video um, brought on. We've had dozens of emails from it. So I thought it was about time that we, 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 we started getting on with this. These are the three planes that I've, I've made and been using as my daily runners. And in fact, I put all my other usual planes away, out of the way. I just wanted to use these for a bit, to check the one tripe. And they're not, they've, they've been absolutely wonderful. This little smoothing plane's been a, a champion. I really, I use that at every opportunity I can. Um, this jack plane's been nice. It's been nice to be able to build them to suit your own requirement rather than just relying on whatever you can get hold of which seems to be the story with wooden planes. I made this one, it's a very small jack, very low as well, but it's the same size as the Stanley number no. five and I find that a very handy handy length. And then we've got this little jointer. It's about two foot long, but it's very narrow compared to normal wooden jointers. And again, it's just been nice, it's just been nice to have a small light plane. And I offset the handle there, which is also um, something I prefer. Now the irons differ a little bit in them as well. These two, the, the smoother and the little jointer, they, they've just got run-of-the-mill Stanley irons. Now these are just out of the, the Bailey pattern planes, so just a thin flimsy iron with a cap iron. Uh, and they've worked surprisingly well. Ideally you want a nice thick iron in a wooden plane, but this is really proving that to be a load of rubbish. The only thing I can really fault them on for wooden planes is this little bulbous bit on the cap iron. Which makes a bit of a faff fit in the wedge. But once you get there, there's no reason not to use them. So if that's what you've got, use that. It works fine, particularly if you just wanted to test the concept. So those, that's those two. And then this one, the jack plane, that's got a wooden plane iron in it. So that's out of an old wooden plane that was, the, the plane was in wreck and ruin. But the, the iron itself, um, I recycled. And it, it, oh, it was absolutely knackered, the iron. It was really badly pitted, so it took me hours to clean it up. But out of the three, this is definitely the, the favourable iron. The work was worth doing. The only reason I would really recommend against going for an old wooden plane iron, uh, and that is the, 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 the whole, um, I suppose the briefing for me for these planes is to make sure that you've got rid of as many of the problems associated with wooden planes as possible. And if you've got an iron that's badly warped or badly pitted, it's not going to bed particularly well to the plane. So you, you build this beautiful plane only to find that the thing won't set and you're going to blame yourself. And it isn't. It could be the iron. And for that reason, I've decided that the plane we're going to build is going to use a new hock iron. And I just want to make this very clear that this is not the option you have to do. You don't have to spend on a new iron. If you've got a Stanley iron or an old wooden one you want to use, use it. But I just wanted to make something that is is followable for most folk. And, and you'll be able to, um, if, if you're going to use an iron like this, you'll be able to build along using my measurements. But if not, you'll just have to accommodate the new measurements of your iron to suit the plane you're making. Now this is actually the first time I've ever uh, bought an aftermarket iron, um, except for my uh, my big number eight jointer plane, which I've burnt through the first one already, so I had to get a second one. But this is the first time I've actually gone out and bought a, a, a um, an aftermarket iron, and I have to say I've been very impressed with this. But it's a separate video in itself, and that's something I want to do in the future anyway, so we'll talk about that more later. Oh, by the way, this iron is the... Um, it's it's out there a bench plane range that is for the Stanley planes. Um, so this is not the wooden plane iron. I find that, well, they're made for the Krenoff type planes. They're a bit short for what we're doing. So if you're going to go down that route, get the full length bench plane iron. Now, the next bit is the bit that's been absolutely baffling me, and that is the construction. Now, these are laminated. So what that means is they are, wait there... prepared I left them over there basically we have 
a, a center part. Now this PC is going to be base, uh, basically it's just a it's a bit wider than your iron. That's your middle component. Then we cut all our angles in it. So that's like the bed where the the iron sits. And then we glue our sides back on. Uh, and then we have all of this cut out pre-done for ourselves. If we get rid of that so you can see. All of this is basically chopped out then. There's no chiseling, nothing. It's dead easy. The reason I've been battling whether to go this option is because whilst it is very straightforward, and if you've got a bandsaw, it's very fast, um, it, it, it's, it, it's not the most efficient way for us to build a plane by hand because we have got a tremendous amount of rip with a handsaw to break these. And then we're essentially prepping these three times, which, like I said, it's inefficient. A far more efficient method, and I did a little trial on this, took 10 bloody minutes, that's all it took, to chop this out with a chisel. This isn't a one with all the abutments chopped in like a traditional wooden plane. This is just to replicate the square cutout of these peg or these pin planes. Um, but as much as this one is the method I would probably go for if I was doing it again myself, it, it, it's, it, it's filled with more problems. And though that's it completely defeated the object of what I was trying to do with these planes. I want these planes to be able to be built by a woodworker, you know, with moderate woodworking skill and be able to eradicate as many of the, post, of the problems associated with wooden planes. And one of those, or the biggest problem really, is, is the, having a flat bed, a very flat bed. Well, it doesn't have to be flat, but it has to be ref, um, registered very well to the back of the iron. So that's a great reason to go for a new iron with a laminated style construction, because this, this bed piece here, which is essentially that, you know, we can cut that gruffly as we like with an handsaw, and then we can just put it in the vise and we can plane it flat. So that's going to be dead flat. Your new iron's going to be dead flat. And, and that's got rid of a lot of the trouble associated with play, um, um, wooden planes. So despite the inefficiencies, that's why we're going to go this laminated option. Um, you can see here the couple of blanks I've got ready. Now this is, uh, again, it shows more efficiency again on the chop out method. If I wanted a plane of this size, you know, there's my blank. It's very, it's quite, you know, it's, it's final dimension. All I've got to do is chop this bloody triangle bit out uh, and I'm, uh, I'm laughing. As well as, you know, I'm going to need a much thicker piece to make this lamination because I'm going to lose a bit of material when I rip it. And again, this, this is actually optional. I prefer to make it out of one piece if possible because these planes, you can actually barely tell, these two, that they are laminated because the same pieces are going back. As well as this smoothing plane, I made this out of three separate pieces. And this is an option you can take um, if you haven't got a thick bit of wood. So really the thickest bit of wood you need is, is, the, is the thickness of the iron. Um, and that's what I did here. I just had a bit of two inch material and then I just slapped on a couple of thin bits I had kicking about. So you can tell where the laminations are basically. You can tell it's a laminated plane, but it, it doesn't matter. So, you know, if you've got three bits that don't match or a nice thick bit, it doesn't really matter what you do. Oh, and to top it all off, I knocked up an English pattern marking gauge. If you saw my shoddy last video I made myself, um, on how to set these, there's a lot of requests about making them. So I thought I'll knock one up and I was pleasantly surprised at how easy it was. So we'll get, I'll get a follow up of that soon. But, um, it's very nice. I made a few different pins, oh dear. all different styles here. So we've just got a knife type pin there. This is out of an old cut nail. Um, and they've got one here. The, these two here are like a left and right handed pin. And I was just experimenting really, but what I found, unless you had a handmade, um, hand forged nail, they were too soft, so they needed hardening. Um, and that just kind of made it a bit complicated. So I made the pin that actually went in it just out of a screw because they're hardened. And that's worked very well. I've been very pleased with that. So uh, we'll get that sorted. It's very, um, I'll get that out. It's very simple. You can see it's just three parts, the shaft, little wedge and the head bit and then it's just got the little angled 
where well, it's got the rounded mortise and then the little angled wedge shaped notch bit in the side. So the plane build is definitely going ahead. We will have full size plans for the jack plane, which can easily be scalable to whatever size plane you're making. Uh, I've just got to get it made. So do subscribe to be updated. If you're planning to build along, you'll find a full list for everything you're going to need over at our website. There's a link in the description.